Hey, Randy Joe here, and this is 1000 Reviews, the series where I plan on reviewing every single album from the 1000 albums listened to Before You Die book. And today we are looking at 10 CC's 1974 album, Sheet Music. Now, Sheet Music was produced underneath the UK label by 10 CC themselves with art direction from Hip Gnosis, nationality UK, and a running time of 37 minutes and 32 seconds. Now what's interesting about this album is that 10CC proved with this follow-up to their debut that not only are they an incredibly important artist in the 70s, but they also proved the fact that they have made the best Beatles album since Abbey Road. And yes, that does include Let It Be. Because this album is very much a Beatles-influenced album for sure. You can feel it in many of the tracks here, which isn't at all a bad thing as most of that works to the favor of 10CC as these are definitely in their strengths. And at the same time, 10CC really leans more into it and adds their own flair to the styles that the Beatles were doing on things like Abbey Road. But the first track here, Wall Street Shuffle, really doesn't feel like a Beatles song. It is one of the few ones on here that it doesn't feel directly influenced by the Beatles and has a much more funk influenced style. And honestly, this is my least favorite song of the album, probably if I had to pick one, because it is just overall a little bit more forgettable than the rest of the songs here. The chorus, especially to me, feels kind of annoying more than interesting or appealing. The catchiness of this track really honestly feels more like it was meant for radio than anything else on this album. And that's strange to me considering 10CC didn't feel like a band that was necessarily trying to appeal to the radio. But I will say that they quickly shift things around with the second song here, The Worst Band in the World, which definitely carries on through the Beatles influences that I mentioned here. And what I like about The Worst Band in the World is that this is 10CC being a bit comedic or satirical in a way, which is something they seem to do quite a few times throughout their career, as this time around they are poking fun at a lot of bands who are simply just trying to catch the rise to fame by just having very catchy choruses and very silly lyrics that will quickly stick into people's heads. They're mocking the way that a lot of bands will care more about the pop appeal of the music rather than the actual quality of the music. And this song is also interesting because even as they are judging and making fun of those things, they are completely going against every possible venue that could be a pop song or a radio friendly track. There's a lot of strange and unusual beat switches throughout this song as well as absolutely no chorus whatsoever in this one. Through their lyrics they're making a contrast between how ridiculous and silly a lot of mainstream bands are at the time while at the same time proving why they are not that band by doing all the things that most bands wouldn't do. Removing a chorus from a song or having no chorus whatsoever is a very unusual thing for a band to do. And it's this sort of silly and almost satirical humor that I really enjoy about 10CC. It comes up again in the fifth track, Clockwork Creep, which is by far my favorite 10CC song on this album and 10CC song in general, I would go and say. Because like I said, comparing again to the Beatles, this feels almost like if you took something as silly as Maxwell's Silver Hammer, but instead of making it poppy, you made it a bit more absurd. The theme and the message of this song, or I guess the lyrics I should say, dive into the mindset of a bomb that is going to explode on a plane. It's not from the perspective of any people on the plane, it's not from the perspective of the pilot of the plane, but rather it is from the direct perspective of the bomb itself. It is counting down throughout this track and really just leading up to the climax of its eventual explosion. And not only does this song dive into the perspective of this inanimate object that is the bomb, it also dives into the perspective of the jumbo jet itself as well, which again, a very strange venue to take lyrically as this isn't something that most bands would want to really tell a perspective from. But in doing so, they create a very unique and catchy and just silly track that again is still dark in its subject matter. It's crazy how they can take something so dark but make it so absurd and so fun. Continuing again with the Beatles comparisons, there's also the song Old Wild Men, which feels again as if it was taken straight off of something like Abbey Road. But you can definitely hear the influence of the Beatles on here with these oohs and ahs that are being sung so harmonically in the background. 
the voices as well have this very echoey and self-harmonizing effect that the Beatles would use so much throughout their career, especially in the second half. And on top of that, the overall spiritual tone of this track too is very Beatles-esque. One song that does take again a detour that feels very much like a 10cc track and not like it is too heavily influenced would be a song like Hotel, the third track on here, which begins with this very eerie and strange and spacey atmospheric-like tone before breaking out into a Caribbean Hawaiian based track. This feels almost Paul Simon-esque if I were to make a comparison but again, this is just at the end of the day, a very Caribbean based track that honestly feels as if it was something straight out of a resort. It's incredibly upbeat and bongo based and meant to be as infectious as possible. And it definitely carries that throughout with its instrumental. And speaking of bongos, the eighth track on here, Baron Samedi, is a bongo based fast paced track that feels as if it is constantly shifting in tone between this fast, rapid pace before shifting back to a much more laid back and relaxing chorus. The shifting between these two passages creates a nice contrast of styles with this fast, quick paced bongos before going into these angelic harmonic like styles. And also I'd like to quickly talk about the 10th and final track on here, O Effendi, which isn't by any means anything too significant in this album. It is one of the weaker tracks, I would say, but I especially enjoy how great it ends off the album with the lyric, goodbye friend, there's no more goodies in the pipeline, because it just feels like such a great way to end off an album that is so full of incredibly unique goodies. And even though this song itself isn't too incredible or too unique, it is definitely a great way to end off the album. Now with all that being said, you can definitely feel the influences on this album. Definitely feels like something that the Beatles would have been capable of if they had kept going and didn't put out Let It Be as their final album and instead continued on their very experimental route because the art rock fusion throughout this thing is definitely the era that they were going into and 10CC feels as if they took up the helm and continued that on. And I've read about how 10CC is the Beatles of the 70s to some people, and I definitely can see that comparison and I understand why that would be the case. But that being said, do I think it is that significant? Do I think it is that much of a must listen? I'm not quite sure. For me, the soft rating of this album came to a 7.7 .7 out of 10, which I will go ahead and bump up to an 8 out of 10 hard rating. But even still with this 8 out of 10 rating, I don't think it is too significant of an album or a necessary must listen of an album. I wasn't overwhelmingly impressed, but I wasn't let down either. I think this is definitely enjoyable for what it does, but it's nothing that a music fan wouldn't have already heard at this point in time anyway. So with that being said, it gets a NE for not essential. Anyways, that pretty much does it for this review. Let's see what the next album we're listening to is in the 1000 albums to listen to before you die book. All right, random number generator, one to 1001, generate 841. 841 being the Chemical Bros Dig Your Own Hole, 1997. So give that a listen and I'll review that in exactly one week from now. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to follow along in listening to every album from the 1000 albums to listen to before you die book. And as always, my name is Randy Joe, and I am signing off.